Today on Community Cooking, we have guest Vandana Chef making another great meal. This time it's an Indian vegetarian dinner. We're serving chana masala, brown rice pulao, and cucumber raitha. You won't want to miss this episode. We're cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community, so grab a seat and get comfortable. We have another great meal for you. This is your Community Cooking. Cooking. I'm your host Maria Prekajis and I'm always excited to have Vandana Chef with us. Thanks for coming in. Thanks so much for having me Maria. I love it when you're here because you're, you help people with their love of good food and you're a registered dietitian as well. I am. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist and I love helping people eat delicious food that's quick and easy and tasty. Well yours is always quick and easy and the spices you use and you know different herbs make it fantastic. So let's talk about today's meal. What are we making? So we're making chana masala, which is a traditional Indian dish made with garbanzo beans in a sauce. And masala really is the term used for spices. It could be the sauce. And so you might find chicken tikka masala or something else in an Indian restaurant. It's the same base. It's just that the protein may be swapped out. Well, and my niece loves Indian food. So we go out a lot for it. And she has educated me. But it's great. You. You're vegan, vegetarian. I, I'm vegetarian, okay, predominantly plant-based. Yes, and there are a lot of options in Indian restaurants and in Indian food. So true. Culturally, there are so many more tasty vegetarian options within the Indian cuisine. I love it. I love it. So we're making that, and then we're also making a couple other things. Yes, we're making a brown rice pilaf, and I like that because it's made with brown rice, so it's a little healthier. And brown rice typically takes a very long time, but now you can find quick cook, 10-minute cook brown yes. rice. So that's what I brought in today. We're okay. going to use that, and we're going to finish off with a cooling cucumber raita, which is a yogurt dip made with cucumber and yogurt. Okay, as Greeks have tzatziki, which is a, probably a little similar because especially when you're using spice, you like a little like cooling. Yes, I love it. Well, where do we start with on the first dish? So let's start with the chana masala. So here are the things we're going to use. We're going to use an onion, which I'm going to get going, chopping. And while I'm chopping, I'll walk you through the rest okay. of the ingredients. I know there are a lot of ingredients. Do not let that intimidate you because they're things you can have. So list off the ingredients for right. me. Right. So you're, I'm just going to take a break here. We're going to use onions, garlic, ginger, some serrano chilies, and we're using turmeric, cumin seeds, coriander, and this is the coolest spice. It's called garam masala. Garam means hot or spice mix. Oh, okay. And that's all it is, and you can find it at a traditional Indian grocery store, or now you can find it in many American stores. Oh, of course. And so that's, that's really going to give you a lot of flavor into any Indian dish. Okay. Little olive oil and salt, I see. Right, so I'm using canola oil okay. this time around, and salt, garbanzo beans, and some tomato that's pureed, and there's some tomato sauce. Okay, perfect, I love it. I, and like I said, don't be intimidated, and nowadays you can find all, especially the Indian spices, at almost any American supermarket. Exactly, it's a lot easier to find ingredients, and this is actually not that complicated. Most of these ingredients can be used in many different cuisines, so it doesn't have to be a one-time only you know, yes. ingredient shopping. And if you hate buying a spice, you use it once, and then you never use it again. So this can be, I mean, you've made numerous dishes for us over the years, and a lot of the same spices, but used in different ways, and the flavors come out differently, too, exactly. how you combine them. Exactly. And so traditionally, of course, I would um, soak the garbanzo beans overnight okay. and then cook them up. And you can also use canned beans. So either canned beans or the ones that you make at home. Just make sure if you use the can, you rinse out the can thoroughly. Okay. If you rinse it two to three times, you can actually get the sodium content down by 40%. Oh, wow, that's great. So that's pretty cool. And we're going to use a saucepan, and we want to make sure that's fairly hot. Right. Good reminder. So I'm going to just bump up the heat on our pan. Well, and that sodium is such a bad thing when you over sodium. <laughs> over salt. Over salt, <laughs> over sodium. <laughs> you get the picture. Right. And so it's not that you can't have food, uh, salt in your food. It's just, if you, don't, you know, we have an abundance of it coming in food, especially yes. the processed foods. So just make sure you're mindful of using more spices and herbs to flavor food rather than adding extra salt or extra sugar. Yeah. 
which is, and that's why home cooked anything is so much better than anything store bought or and a lot a lot of restaurants now are going very very healthy and being you know mindful of that but you know what goes in your dish when you make it at home exactly you can totally control it and often people are intimidated by cooking but really cooking can be fun it can be a family activity and once you get into the swing of things and find easy recipes like these you can put it together in less than half an hour well and if you wanted to add uh, a meat, what would you add to this? Do you so think? I wouldn't add it to this, but I would okay. use the base, basically all the spices and the tomato and onion base, yeah. and then I would swap out the beans for either chicken or okay, any so other protein source. Okay, swap it source. out. Yeah, that makes exactly. sense. Exactly. Well, exactly. and I always think, oh, I could be a vegetarian because I love my vegetables. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll eat them breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm a little weird. But, <laughs> yes, we know this. <laughs> um, but I'm always thinking I'm so worried about the protein. But garbanzo beans have protein, and there's always a way to get them in there. So true. Like protein, often we have a myth that being a vegetarian or vegan, you can't meet your protein needs. But really, half a cup of garbanzo beans is going to give you seven grams protein. But it's also going to give you fiber, which is going to be satiating and filling. Well, and that's the thing. You want to feel full because there are a lot of times that I am just hungry. And you can eat empty calories and different things. But, I mean, eating healthy like this and with the fiber really makes you feel full. Exactly. So what I did right here is I have my okay. onion chopped, I have my serrano chili sliced up, and I'm going to just grate some fresh ginger. Oh, I, I love, love fresh ginger. Me too. And my so... My pan is hot too, which is good. Yep, I see it. And oh. actually, you know what? I'm going to let you continue okay. this. And I, I will can grate a little it. ginger. What are the good elements of ginger. So ginger can actually help with anti-inflammatory properties, so it can help reduce inflammation in your body. Okay. And I'm adding... Oh, you did the oil and then the spices. Yep. Okay. I'm adding some I'm paying attention. And you hear that? It's popping. I'm adding the onions in. And back to the ginger, I'm sorry. Right. I got and sidetracked. So it's, it's really good for you as far as reducing your inflammation overall in your body. It's also really good for nausea and vomiting and not to be gross, but really for any kind of GI <laughs> symptoms. Um, That's a nice way to put it. GI symptoms. And is this enough ginger? Um, you want maybe a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. I can grate more. And there we go. Our onions are smelling good. Oh yeah. Onions on the stovetop always smell delicious. And the serrano chili, so we both like things spicy. We do. So we, we get along well. And if, again, you don't like really spicy food, you can skip the chili completely. Or you could take off the seeds that are inside, and that's really what adds the extra heat. The heat. Okay. Tell me when you need the ginger. I'm just going to continue grating. All right. I'm going to add the garlic. And this is minced garlic. You can either do it at home, or you can buy store-bought minced garlic. And I heard a trick the other day, you can buy the mince at the store, or you can buy the peeled garlic at the store, and that, to me, is 90% of the battle, is right. peeling the garlic. Exactly. And then mince it yourself. So lots of ways to get your garlic in. Okay, I okay. am ready for the ginger. And I have Thank a lot you so much. for you. You are welcome. Ooh. Oh, that smells good. I could almost eat it raw. I eat almost everything raw, but I won't for that. <laughs> what I like to do with my ginger is, besides put it in cooking, I actually like to shave it thin and put it in water and have like a ginger tea. Oh, yeah. That That's would be really good. good. Really good. Well, and everything here is healthy for you in one way or another. It is. It's not only tasty, but it's healthy, and it's, um, it can help prevent some of your chronic conditions as well. Which is great. How did you get into being a registered dietitian? Dietitian and nutritionist. Um, well, I always was fascinated with food. I loved eating, and I watched my yeah. mom growing up preparing some delicious meals at home. And being raised plant-based or predominantly plant-based, I was a dancer, a model, and performing had a big impact as far as when I didn't eat as well, I didn't perform as well, and I noticed the connection. Oh. And so that's really what got me into health and nutrition. I love it. I love it. And you have clients that. I always say you just want them to have a healthy relationship with food, it's, which is more than just eating healthy. Right. It truly is because I have clients who have such skewed relationships with food, 
meaning they're either just so afraid to eat because they're going to gain weight or they have other issues going on or they just don't know when to stop because they have lost that satiety center. Yeah. And so just identifying that there should be no fear with food. All foods can fit and we want to savor and nourish our bodies with and, you know, a variety throughout the day. Well, and both of us being from ethnic backgrounds, you know, dinner used to be and meals would be the time. You just didn't sit down and shovel in your food. You sat and you talked and growing up it was just a way of enjoying your food and you know, our parents and grandparents really spent a lot of time because they loved cooking and it, it was only healthy things that were available so a lot true. of the time. Culturally, you know, most cultures really took time to savor meals. They slowed down, it was very mindful, um, minimal food wastage when you look around the yeah. world. And so if we could just take some of those techniques, and even if it's one meal a day, if we could do that as a family, it would be amazing. I know it's tough. It is tough. Life being so busy, maybe it's once a week. Just well, and we tend to sit, when I cook at home, a lot of people sit in front of the TV on the couch. We actually either sit at the table or a bar is great. And we sit and talk and turn the TV off, which is amazing. Once in a while, we have to Google something we're talking about. So <laughs> we do have to pick up our phones. We have to look up something. But, all right, so now you're adding the rest of the spices. Exactly. And so I added some turmeric. I added some coriander powder. And I'm adding my garam masala. And this garam masala is really a combination of many different spices. So it has cinnamon and cloves and oh. nutmeg. It's, it's an amazing I spice. I can smell mix. them all. I love nutmeg now in my coffee instead you of cinnamon. You do. Interesting. It's kind of like a hot toddy year round. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way of thinking. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, uh, and it just gives it a little ump. Mm, but, yeah, that smells smell so good. good. Add some salt. A little bit of salt. And we will go ahead and add our garbanzo beans. I love if you rinse them a few times, 40%. That's almost half the salt you take out. And canned vegetables really do have a lot of sodium. So they that do. is awesome. And so if when you're making this, it looks a little dry because I do want it to cook some more. Yes. Just go ahead and add some water. And I'm going to use actually go. these bowls okay. so I can get I'm the last, to tidy up, last dregs of water, you okay. know, the tomato pulp. Oh, it smells so delicious. Yeah, garbanzo beans. I had a friend in college. That is all she ate. <laughs> she was on a, she just walk around the house with a That's cup awesome. of garbanzo beans. But they really are good. I think people think, oh, they're not that tasty. But just without anything, they're good. I think so. And you can actually find roasted garbanzo beans now in grocery stores, Gosh. like a snack instead of nuts. It's pretty cool. I love that. I'm going to add just a little bit more of the garam masala. And you always add them in steps and not add a lot at the beginning because you can never take spices out. Exactly. So I think this is ready to just let simmer. Okay. And so I'm going to cover it up. And, and about how long do we let it simmer? About 10 to 12 minutes because it's already cooked beans. Okay. And we already sauteed the veggies. So it's really a matter of getting the flavors married together. And the next two dishes, say them again because you pronounce them much better than me. <laughs> so we're making a brown rice pulav. Pulav. And we're making cucumber raita. Raita. All right. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be making both of those when we get back. You're watching Community Cooking. Alexa, how do you tell if asparagus is still good? If it's not moldy or slimy, it's okay to eat. Enable the new skill from Save the Food on your Amazon Alexa and help fight food waste. Welcome back to Community Cooking. If you're just joining us, I am with my friend and guest chef, Vandana Chef, and we just made the chana masala. Yes, we did. And we have two other things we're gonna make. What are they? So we're making a brown rice pulav, and we're making a cucumber raita. The names. I, like I said, I can say baklava till the cows <laughs> come home, but I'll let you take the Indian names. Absolutely, no problem. So tell me the ingredients for the rice. Okay, very simple. So we're using some canola oil, adding some fresh whole spices. So there's bay leaf, there's cinnamon sticks, there's cardamom pods. Oh, that's what it looks like. Yeah, this is what a cardamom pod looks like. I love it. And then there's cloves. I do know those. And these are star anise. What are they? They're oh. like star anise. Just smell oh them. I was going to really say. Good. It has yes. a really nice fragrance oh, to the rice. It. That is cool looking. And so we just add the whole spices in here. Some quick cooked brown rice, 
basmati rice, which is traditional Indian rice. It's got an aroma and fragrance naturally. And because it's quick cook, it's going to take only 10 to 12 minutes to cook. I love that. And that's it. And then I decided to add some color, so I'm adding some green peas and carrots. But you don't have to. You could keep it simple, just spiced. All right. Well, let's start with the rice. Okay. And then we'll go on to the other. I love, oh, the yogurt. I'm it, ready for it. Perfect. So just a little so just bit of canola. A canola oil. Okay. And then we're going to add oh, some of our whole spices. And then you add the whole spices. So it wakes them up. I was going to say it's kind of like roasting them, but you're so, she's so eloquent. It is waking them up, and <laughs> I can already smell them. Holy cow. And the one trick is after you make it, you don't want anyone choking on them. Just make sure, just pull out at least the big ones okay. off before you serve okay. it. So, so you can that. smell them right away. Oh, and yeah. We're going to add. Oh, they're popping. <laughs> adding our brown rice. So you add the rice into the oil and spices. And then add the water. Okay. And it's all going to cook together. And then we'll add the veggies at the end after exactly. the rice. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. Exactly. That smells so good. All the spices together. And adding some salt. And we're going to bring this to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, we'll cover it and let it simmer for about 10 to 12 minutes. And it's just ready. Oh, perfect. Perfect. And then, so then for the next recipe, I'm going to move this aside. Okay, I love cucumbers of any type, but these are small ones. These are. These are Persian cucumbers. Persian, I was going to say, there's a name for them. But. Yes. So I get them at the Middle Eastern store, but you can get them at any grocery stores. Even regular stores now carry these. Okay. And I've already washed them. And all I'm going to do is take off the tips, but they're so tender, you don't need to peel oh. them, take off the seeds. They it's like a mini have. English cucumber. It is. And you can decide to either chop this or grate it for raita. I'm going to just chop it. Okay. Raita. See, I got it down now. You did. And it's very similar to tzatziki. The difference is this will have a little Indian flavor to it. We'll add cilantro and stuff maybe mint or dill. That's okay, yeah, we use, exactly. You know it all. And then just yogurt. It's then that one is actually non-fat Greek yogurt. She had a little Greek in it for <laughs> me. Thank you. I love it. And it, you don't have to get non-fat. I choose to get non-fat because I like that I'm getting the protein and calcium from non-fat yogurt, yes. and then I can get my fat from other sources that I want, like avocados, nuts, and seeds. Oh, see? Pick, you got to pick your battles in the kitchen. And so, since the yogurt is going to be quite thick, okay. we should go ahead and add some water to dilute it a little bit. Just a little. Just okay. a little. Perfect. Just a little bit of water. And I'm going to let you kind of okay. blend that together. I'm going to chop up one more. Oh, that still smells so good with the rice over there. So, who are your clients? Not who are they, but right. typically, who are your clients? Who, who comes to you for help and guidance? You know, it's a whole range. It's basically anyone can contact me to come in and see me in my office. But um, most of the time, my clients either have a chronic condition like diabetes or heart disease or kidney disease. Okay. Or it's people who are trying to just get in better shape. Um, I have clients who want to come in just to make sure at their stage of life that they're eating right so that they can feel good, <laughs> feel energized. And live a longer life. <laughs> right. And so it's not just for disease um, control or management, but it's also for health promotion and disease prevention. Oh, I love it. Okay, I have a little tip for the fat-free Greek yogurt. Okay, let's hear it. I love my veggies, and I can eat them raw all the time and just with no dip. But all the dips you get, you know, are usually fattening, the dressings and stuff. So I do this with spices. And sometimes if I'm lazy, I take the dry dressing that you're supposed to add mayonnaise and sour uh. cream to and I add it with a little bit of water to thin it. It just hit my, and it is the best vegetable dip, and you don't know, and you're getting protein with it. Perfect, that's a great tip. And I really tell my clients, anytime you need a dip or a sauce, you can always swap out sour cream or mayonnaise for I did it with chicken yogurt. salad the other awesome. day. Yeah, I mean, I didn't realize, and I've really been using the yogurt a lot lately. But that's my little tip I to love get it. your kids to eat their vegetables and not have a ton of fat <laughs> in the dip. Right, and you still get flavor. You get the creamy uh, texture of it. Of course. Ooh, it smells so good. And look, it's just perfect, It's man. perfect. You did a great job. Now, do you want me to add serrano chilies or yeah, not? Up to you. Okay. Of course. So I'm going <laughs> to... I mean, up to you. Yes, <laughs> We're a dangerous yes, combination. Please. We I both know. like spicy stuff. 
So I'm going to compromise and do half so okay, that perfect. the crew could still enjoy it. <laughs> so we won't, it won't be so hot. So you just add the chopped cucumbers in. Exactly. And just a little bit of the chili and all the cilantro. And there we go. Oh, and yum. And we didn't add salt, so let's go ahead okay. and season it with a little, a little salt. salt. And I will mix all and that in. Ooh, it. it smells good. I might like this better than tzatziki, don't tell. Don't tell my <laughs> ancestors. It's close enough. Yeah. It's an Indian version. So now, do we, I know we'll plate it up in a bit, but do you eat this separate? Do you eat it just with it all to cool everything off? Typically, it's served as part of the meal. Okay. So when we serve it, it'll be the chana masala, which is going to be a little spicy, served over some kind of grain dish, either brown okay. rice or white rice pulao, or it could be served with bread, like roti or naan. Okay. And then you have raita to cool things down. Yum and yum and yum. And then we're also going to, you're going to, we're going to garnish because you have, it has to look pretty. Food has to look pretty, right? Food has to look pretty. And so the garnish, you just have a little bit of a green onion. I do. Just because not everyone likes raw onions on their chana masala. Typically, it's served with raw onions and chilies. Okay. And so I'm doing green onions, and I'm going to serve some. I didn't get a chance to get bell peppers. You could, if you wanted a milder flavor, you could get a green bell pepper, chop okay. it up real fine, and serve it. So I'm going to use a jalapeno, but I'm going to take off the seeds so it's not <laughs> spicy. <laughs> so it's not super spicy. This smells so good. So the tip when you eat something hot, you don't drink water. You want either milk or yogurt, exactly. right? Exactly. Exactly. Or something sweet. Maybe you could have some fruit. Okay. That's and good that to know. I thought you were going to say like a cookie. Come on. Yeah, you could. You could have a cookie. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a cookie. But to really take the hotness out. I know people start guzzling water, and I'm like, no, 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 no. that's not what you do. You're going to still feel the heat. Yes. I like the fruit, though. That's a good one. Okay. And all the heat is right there. It's right there. And this is just for the garnish this for later. Is, exactly. This is for the chana masala because it's going to be kind of like a stew, so it's nice to put some crunchy, fresh toppings on top. Well, and I like you said, you could use a bell pepper, a little bit of everything. Right, or you could put some chopped tomatoes. Your choice. You can play it by ear. So I have to ask you, how often do you cook? I mean, we cooked Greek food a lot growing up, but there's not a, as much of a variety as Indian food. Do you make Indian food most of the time during the week? You know, I do it a couple times a week. Okay. And that way I feel like I get my fix of the things <laughs> that I want to eat that I miss because it can be time consuming. So quick recipes like this I can do easily on a weekday. But if it's a weekend, I'm doing something special, then it's a big feast. Okay. I know because I tend to cook. I love this show because we encourage viewers to try all these great recipes. We have no slouches on the show. We bring in the real deal. But I tend to cook the same thing. And that's why I love when we, you know, film the shows, I'm like, oh, I have great new recipes again. And they're easy, especially from you. Thank you. It's, that's, that's the goal. Often my clients walk in feeling intimidated or nervous about what restrictions they're going to have, and they walk out with a smile knowing that it's not that difficult. Having quick, easy-to-go recipes well, makes a difference. Well, and you're helping someone with their health and their attitude, and it's so mental as well. That has to be super rewarding. It truly is, especially not just the client, but it's often the whole family that's revolving around that person. Everyone has an impact. Well, and like you said, this is easy. So, you know, make it at home. Why not? Right. And you could swap out the beans. I know we did the chana masala earlier with yes. garbanzo beans, but you could try any beans. You could try kidney beans instead. And that's okay. a whole other dish called rajma. There's so <laughs> much to do. We're going to take a quick break, though. When we come back, my favorite part is always tasting all the goodies. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Community Cooking.
welcome back to Community Cooking. I love you, I love cooking with you, but this is my favorite part. I am excited. <laughs> okay, so the chana masala, the rice pulaf, and <laughs> I can't say it. The cucumber raita. The cucumber raita. There we go. Um, I don't know what to taste first, or do we taste them all together? It's completely up to you. And you've so added a lovely garnish of uh, some peppers. I did, and I added some green onions and cilantro to it. Okay. The spice is just right, by the way. Mm. It's good. It's spicy. I'm warning the crew. The flavors, it's all about spices. It really is. It tastes so good. And, and the rice, adding those, the, the large spices at the beginning, the whole. It's just very fragrant, right? It's so delicious. And then, I have to taste this. Oh. Definitely goes better with this, but this totally rivals tzatziki. That's awesome. And it's fresh and light, and you have a little bit of spice, and then the rice is fragrant and yum. I'm so glad. With a capital Y. All caps. Y-U-M. Thank you so much for coming on. It's always so much fun to have you. It's great to be here. Thanks again. And your recipes were amazing. I really hope you all try these at home. For Vandana, myself, and the entire crew, thanks for watching. And remember, we really do have some of the best chefs right here in our own community. We'll see you next time on Community Cooking. If you'd like a copy of the recipe seen on this show, send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to the Office of Cable and Community Relations. That's 3350 Civic Center Drive, Suite 200, in Torrance, California, 90503. Be sure to note the show number displayed on the screen. And don't forget, you can find all the fresh ingredients used on today's show at the Farmer's Market. Visit the one here in Torrance at Wilson Park. That's located at 2200 Crenshaw Boulevard. They're open every Tuesday and Saturday from 8 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. rain or shine. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show, email us at communitycooking at torrentca.gov and check us out online at youtube.com slash torrentcitycable and like us on Facebook at Community Cooking TV.